Okay. As usual, the internet has lost its mind talking about something it doesn't fully understand, but that is incredibly important. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, I'm a board certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today we're talking about blood clots, both in relation to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as well as hormonal contraceptive pills. If you're new here, I would love to have you stick around. Please hit that subscribe button. If you learned something in the video today, hit that like button. If you just want the information and you don't wanna subscribe, that is totally fine too. Let's jump into it. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was recently halted momentarily to investigate a risk of something called central venous sinus thrombosis. This is kind of a blood clot, but more like a stroke. And it is really important to look at because it can be really dangerous. Importantly, this wasn't pulled or halted because the risk is so incredibly high. We've seen about seven of these in relation to the uh, 7 million doses that have been given at this point. That's still incredibly rare, but it's more common than the general population. I've seen some anti-vaccine people saying, well, this is the problem with emergency use authorization. The vaccine wasn't FDA approved. And uh, not exactly. So of course the vaccine is released under EUA, not FDA approval, but that's not exactly the same as not having the safety studies. All the same safety and efficacy trials are required for an EUA as an FDA approval. So what is the difference? I really, really like this chart. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. Basically what happens is that in a regular FDA approval, you do everything stepwise. All the trials are done, three steps of trial, then you produce the medication, then you release it. But in a EUA, which is used specifically for emergencies like pandemics and biologic warfare, you can overlap the trials with the production time. So while these trials were being undertaken, the vaccine was being produced in mass just in case it was effective and safe so that it could quickly be gotten out to the general public. Obviously, this is an incredible financial risk to anyone who is funding this production and trial because if it doesn't work or it's not safe, then you have all of these doses of a vaccine that you can't use. And so that doesn't happen in typical production, but in an emergency like a pandemic, like biologic warfare, where you are weighing the risk of the emergency versus the risk of what we call an MCM or a medical countermeasure, then you have to do that faster and you just are willing to take that risk. You basically are removing some of the administrative process, some of the red tape and allowing overlap of those two processes to happen at the risk that you may lose out if it's not safe or effective. The vaccine trial didn't have millions and millions of people, obviously, it had tens of thousands. So if you have a rare complication that happens in I don't know, one in a million people, that's a guess, we don't know yet, you aren't going to pick that up in the trial. So they halted it to look closer and see if this is an investigation that shows an association. It's pulled to identify the risk, not because of the risk. Comparing this to contraceptive risk is totally not valid. Why? This is like comparing car accidents to plane crashes. If seven planes fall out of the sky, we need an investigation. But blood clots in birth control are really different than what they're looking at with the J&J vaccine to see if there's an association because we don't know yet. So when you compare this to birth control, like I've seen happening, it just doesn't make sense because the clots are very different. In birth control, these clots are typically what we call DVT or deep vein thrombosis. Although that can be very life-threatening in some people, it's not always. And it's a little different than a central venous sinus thrombosis, which is basically a stroke and almost always causes death or major morbidity. Let me read you some of these viral tweets that have been making me want to pull my hair out lately. Rebecca Fishbane says, I'm all for safety, but women have been getting blood clots from birth control for decades and they haven't tried particularly hard to modify that. Not true, blood clots used to be a lot more common and we modified that significantly to reduce that risk a lot by changing the dosage and format of birth control. Sophie Papamarco says, a potentially life-saving vaccine is being stalled because of a statistically insignificant clotting problem, but doctors are still prescribing birth control pills daily to young women with acne. And she gives a risk comparison of 0.0000857% with the vaccine and 0.5% with the birth control pill. This is inaccurate. That's not what we're comparing. She's comparing the risk of central sinus venous thrombosis, which is incredibly rare and incredibly life-threatening in almost everyone that gets it, to any blood clot you have on a birth control pill, which can be 
really life-threatening, but also can be just treatable and then you just don't take birth control anymore. So these comparisons are very different. Rebecca Wynn says, the risk of blood clots from birth control pills is one in a thousand and is considered a low risk side effect. The risk from the J&J &J vaccine is one in a million. Hashtag get vaccinated. Like the message, still not accurate. The risk from the J&J &J vaccine is unknown. It has been pulled to investigate that risk. It appears based on the surveillance that it might be around one in a million. The risk on birth control pills of CVST is not one in a thousand. Once again, that is all deep vein thrombosis or blood clots and pulmonary embolism, which can be life-threatening, can be very problematic, but is not as nearly commonly problematic as a CVST. This is just purely people talking about things they don't understand. And it's why I'm so passionate on this channel about making sure you're going to really reliable sources to get your information. So let's actually talk about this risk comparison. Let's look at the risk of CVST, central venous sinus thrombosis, in the general population. It's about 0.04 in 10,000 or four in a million. If you look at people who are on combined hormonal contraceptives, the risk of central venous sinus thrombosis is 0.16 in 10,000 or 16 in a million. So yes, that's a four time increase from someone who is not on a hormonal contraceptive, but the risk is still 16 in a million. That's incredibly, incredibly low risk. And the risk in pregnancy is higher. Are the risks of blood clots on birth control acceptable risks? And why are people panicking about the J&J &J vaccine, but not contraceptive pills? So let's look at all blood clots, all blood clots on birth control. Now we're talking about anything from a deep vein thrombosis in your leg to a pulmonary embolism in your lung. Can this be incredibly life-threatening and deadly? Absolutely. Is it also a lot of the time very treatable? Yes. All of these numbers have ranges. I'm quoting the upper range of all of them because it makes it easier to look at the comparison. So the risk in the general population of venous thromboembolism is about one in 10,000. If you look at someone who is on combined hormonal contraceptive pills, it's about five in 10,000. On drosperinone, which is a type of progestin containing oral contraceptive pills like Yaz, which by the way, happens to be my preferred and currently used type of contraceptive, you see a risk of about 10 in 10,000. So you can see we've gone up from one to five to 10 in 10,000 for people not on hormonal contraceptives versus estrogen and progesterone to 10 in 10,000 for people on estrogen and drosperinone type contraceptives. For people who are pregnant, that risk is 20 and 10,000. And for people who are postpartum, that is 65 and 10,000. So as you can see, the risk on birth control pills of VTE, venous thromboembolism, is higher than the general population, but so much less than pregnancy, which the birth control pill prevents. And still, even on the highest risk pill is 10 and 10,000. Again, I don't want to minimize this risk. It is a risk, it's a real risk. It can cause life limiting and life threatening complications, but it's not comparable directly as in birth control, all the VTEs that can happen to cerebral venous sinus thrombus, because these are very different physiologic modalities and they cause different problems. It really frustrates me to see people just flippantly throwing out these statistics because if you're on birth control and you don't know that these people don't actually know what they're comparing, it looks really scary. What we should be highlighting here is how safe our vaccine process actually is, that we can see something happen in seven in seven million people who got this vaccine and halt production for a moment to take a closer look at it. This is so important. This means we are really, really surveilling what we are giving to the general public and making sure it is safe. And from the point of birth control pills, people saying, oh, nobody cares about this. Of course we care about this. This risk used to be so much higher with very high dose estrogen pills. And we worked hard to alter that and get it down to a lower level, which is still very, unusual. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen DVTs and PEs. Um, I've seen that more often in pregnancy than on birth control pills, but I've certainly seen it. And I've never seen a cerebral venous sinus thrombus, not on birth control and not in pregnancy. That's just really, really rare. So these are just, again, comparing different things. Yes, for most people, this is a low risk that is acceptable, especially when compared to the risk of pregnancy, as we talk about all VTE in pregnancy and on birth control pills and in the general population. If this is a risk that you don't find acceptable to you, 
There are options with lower risk. Progesterone only options have a lower risk of all kinds of blood clots and non-hormonal also have a much lower risk. People always ask me, what kind of birth control do you recommend? And my answer is always, I am neutral on every kind of birth control that is available. They all have risks and benefits depending on the individual. Thank you for being here today. I hope that you learned something. I will be here next Monday. And if you wanna watch another video before then, you can click on the playlist linked over one of those places. Bye.